Is it possible that Elizabeth I had a French admirer? Is it possible that this French admirer was a French ambassador? I really think so. In the autumn of 1568, Bertrand de Salignac de la Motte Fenelon was appointed by Charles IX of France to be the French ambassador to the English court. For seven years, Bertrand was going to have private access to the Virgin Queen. Bertrand de Salignac de la Motte Fenelon was a Vicomte de Saint Julien de Lampon, Baron de Loubert, Seigneur de la Motte Fenelon. He had a seat in the Privy Council and he was a captain of 50 men. He was also very known for his diplomacy. He was a true ambassador. He served as an ambassador at Elizabeth's court, but also later on at James the Sixth of Scotland court. He is the seventh child of Delis de Salignac de la Motte Fenelon, who died in April 1540, and who was the Lord of Castles in La Motte Fenelon and La Motte Masso, the Marais de Gaujolac, the Saint Modin, the Cantenac. He was married himself with Catherine de Ségur, Dame de Cantenac. Bertrand learned diplomacy at the contact of Jean de Gontaut, who was Baron de Byron and who was himself an ambassador in Portugal in 1548. He was sent to war as well, especially during the Italian wars. In 1552, he was sent to fight against the army of Charles V, the Spanish king, the early Roman emperor. In 1554, he fought again for Henry II, where he participated in the Battle of Renty. Bertrand de Salignac de la Motte Fenelon knew what war meant. And I think in many ways that is how he really truly appreciated diplomacy and the effort of diplomacy. On November 26, 1568, la Motte Fenelon is going to meet in person Elizabeth. He's going to be received in an audience. He reported to Charles IX and Catherine de Medici that Elizabeth received us very humanly and staged for us all a graceful and welcoming demonstration that one could have desired to honor your ministers and servants. Elizabeth knew how to flatter and how to receive ambassadors. She wanted a strong relations with France at that time because everything on with Spain was getting more and more difficult. What's very interesting when we look at Lamont Fenelon's report is his kind of attraction to Elizabeth. And what I mean by that is he keeps reporting about her physical appearance. In August 1570, he reported that Elizabeth greeted him, having decorated her court, being herself well-dressed and looking as a wonder. I'm sorry here, but this is not normal diplomatic language. He described her as a wonder. He noticed that she was well dressed. These kind of details, obviously you can say that it shows that Elizabeth really highly respected the French and that she wanted to look her best for them. However, it's here very fascinating that Bertrand de Salignac la Motte Fenelon is noticing that she looks really well, but that he described her as a wonder. Again, this is not diplomatic language. In December 1570, he does again the same thing. He said that he found her in a privy chamber where I found her better dressed than usual. He's almost admitting that she might have made an effort, extra effort for him. I think with all the details, we can almost see that there is some sort of attraction from La Motte Fenelon for Elizabeth. I will never be sure, 100% sure, I don't have love letters or things like that. But I think as historians and as history lovers like you guys, I think it's quite interesting to pick up on these letters, to pick up on what they mean, but also what they could mean. La Motte Fenelon was often invited at court and Elizabeth ensured that they would spend some time together hunting or that they would spend some time together going to festivities. In May 1571, a tournament was organized and lasted three days. 
Lamotte Fenelon reported the Queen of England wanted me to come with her to each of them. She was seeking for his company. At times, they were hunting together, like in September 1570, where they were hunting fallow deer with crossbow. He was so impressed with Elizabeth taking part in two masculine activities. He kept commenting on her being a great hunter, which also meant that he recognized her warlike representation, her warlike qualities and characteristics. He was in awe of her when he reported to the French monarchs, Charles IX and Catherine de Medici, that Elizabeth took the crossbow and killed six fallow deer. He could not believe his eyes that this woman was as powerful as any man. And I think that's where his admiration for her really stemmed from. For him, she was truly one of a kind. And the fact that he reported this type of activities, it was also to show the French monarchs that Elizabeth had to be taken seriously. What's very interesting as well is that a few times, La Motte Fenelon could not help but notice that Elizabeth wanted him hunting with her. She did not want to delay our audience any longer. She really wanted to spend time with him as well. One special moment happened on January 23rd, 1571. The Royal Exchange was opened and La Motte Fenelon explained the importance of this moment. She's going today to see a new building erected, huge and with a beautiful architecture, in order to give it a name, which until now has been professionally called the Royal Exchange. The feast has been made in the house of Master Gresham, who founded the building. I have been invited to accompany the Queen of England to the feast of the Royal Exchange. She wanted to leave around eight at night. The people in the streets did not tire, some in ranks or the forming crowds, with bright torches to honor her with cheerfulness. She asked me, if it did not remind me a little of festivities that were held in Paris. He was witnessing how much Elizabeth was loved and truly adored by her people. And he reported all of this to the French masters. Obviously in 1571, the situation in France had not been really, really good for the French rulers. During that time, during that moment, during this special moment, La Motte Fenelon spent lots of time alone with Elizabeth. After dinner, she talked to me for a very long time. The next day I was going to find the same lady who drew off in a corridor aside. She ordered me to bring a stool and led me to sit next to her in a corner of a private chamber to talk to her after dinner without any ceremony and in private. There is a true closeness and intimacy between La Motte Fenelon and Elizabeth. And I'm not here talking about sexual intimacy. I really believe that at best a friendship happened, but the fact that La Motte Fenelon called her a wonder I sometimes really believe that there was some sort of greater than admiration, probably some attraction from La Motte Fenelon for the Virgin Queen. Another moment that is so fascinating when you look at diplomatic dispatches is when in 1575, La Motte Fenelon revealed that the Queen was upset with him, blaming him for having forgotten her because he had not managed to come and see her as often as he used to. It meant that here she noticed his absence and that she wanted him to be with her more often. Relationships between diplomats and monarchs are very complicated and usually very political. There is no charm between them. There is nothing happening. But at times we are lucky enough to have letters that shows that either a friendship or some closeness happened. And this is what I believe happened between Elizabeth I and La Motte Fenelon. I hope this was very interesting for you to learn more about the mysteries of Elizabeth Court. Thank you so much for watching my videos and I'll see you in another Once Upon a Woman video. See you next time. Bye!